You live in an apartment that has. Do you have a Do you have a stove? I have a, a hot plate. You have a hot plate. Microwave and an air fryer. This is the best deal. I love it so much. It is um, near Burbank, and I pay eleven hundred. That can't be all true. utilities paid. What? Yeah. How? COVID. Oh, I thought and you, it doesn't go up. I thought you were blackmailing somebody. That's what it sounds no, like. No, it doesn't go up either. But here's the big question. You've said you found your person. When are you going to have to give up that apartment? Never. We've oh. already talked about that. There's no point of getting rid of it because of like, let's say him and I, um, my boyfriend and I do move away. Yeah. We want to have some place in LA. So if I'm still filming movies and of course still, still doing standup, I need a home base. You're a complicated case because I, so I know you as a standup. Yeah. But I also like seeing your career, like I'm like, but does she consider, cause you still do a lot of stand up, but you're also like a very successful with all the films you're doing. So I'm kind of like, do, how do you identify or do you consider yourself a stand up or an actor? Up. You're a it's way cooler. Cause when you tell people you're an actor, they yeah. don't, they for, I've been in 18 movies. Insane. They still don't believe me. They'll still be like, oh, but like, are you in anything now? Kind of like, it's not like, what I feel you like done it's for not, me lately kind but, of stuff. Yeah. But when it's like, I do stand up comedy. They're like, no way. Like, it's just like what? so cool to them. And I feel like I'm at the end of the day, I'm doing stand up more because I can do it every week. That's true. There's not many auditions right now. Yeah. But like, even with your pedigree? Yeah. I have not auditioned in like three months. What? Okay. Let me introduce the tea and then I have so many questions for you. Um, our, our steepers steep with us at home as they listen to these episodes. So for those who are receiving at home, we are drinking uh, Bird and Blend's Lemon Sherbet Tea. Here's the thing. It's spelled S-H-E-R-B-E-T, so, but I pronounce it Sherbet. Maybe it's Sherbet. I don't know. Ooh, that's good. Um, oh, I haven't gotten in yet. Um, that is exactly what I needed right now. Um, for those steeping at home, it's an herbal 212. I did it for seven minutes. Really steep to your heart's content. Okay. I am like so confused by what you just said to me. You've been in 18 movies. I, I've watched multiple trailers. I've not seen the films. I'm going to. I'm going to do a, 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 you know, a JD just watch through. Yes, Whole please thing. do. Um, out of curiosity, how in, how in the hell is anyone getting an audition if you're not? I don't think most people are getting auditions right now. Yeah. The strike really caused a lot of, I think, problems in the industry because it's like, everybody lost money. So there's not a lot of things being made. And I don't know if this is true, but this is how I'm looking at it. Back in the day, I was able to take the lower budget f films that I loved, the indie films, the this and then that. Yeah, yeah I love indie. Yeah. And then the, the bigger people weren't doing those. But now that the people up here aren't working as much or went six months without working, they're now taking those lower movies. So it's like the, everything pushes down. Yeah. So now it's like I'm probably going against bigger names. So they're not going to choose me. So that's crazy. Yeah. I love it. It used it's to not be like I'm talent. the cheapest option. Like I did this clown movie and I literally think I booked it because I was cheaper than a movie star. Sorry. Let's back up a hint there. You did a clown movie. Yeah. What does that mean? Oh, it was so great. Is it, this is not like Terrifier. This, like, is it a it horror movie with clowns? Curse, yeah, it was called The Curse of the Clown Motel and it had Tobin Bell from Saw in it. And you could only watch it illegally. What? Mm -hmm. What does that mean? You have to like find it online through an illegal site because it's sold in like Egypt. But it, it's doing so well. That's the thing. I trek like the star meter on IMDb and it's like doing great. Okay, hold on. And I'll get so many followers. I'm like, what? Hold on. Okay. Yeah, it gets crazy. On. So this is a movie that has people I've heard of. Yeah. Like multiple and people I've heard of. That's what I'm saying. That's what's so weird. I don't get it. How did America not buy it? Unless they're, someone here is going to buy it later. The Curse of the Club. Well, everyone is listening. I mean, go check it out. Please um, do. We have a loyal fan base. Go listen or watch. So is there but, any uh, opportunity for you to get scared watching it? Or because you know everything, it's just not. Okay. I always wanted to know. So I don't get scared. I think it psychologically messes with me, but the thrillers do. 
The thrillers. The thrillers, not the horror ones. The horror ones are cheesy, but the thrillers, like the Lifetime movies, which I love doing. Yeah. How the writers do it is they give the villain, who's usually me. Wait, you get to be the villain? I'm always the villain. I've probably been the good girl once. Dream job. I'd rather be the villain. But they give the villain a justifiable reason to kill everybody. Like in her mind. Uh Uh-huh. Okay. So it makes you like feel crazy. You're like, I'm killing them because they, I don't know. It's so like when you're filming that and you have to like pretend to stab someone and you're, you have a body bag, like a trash bag and you're, and you're creeping into a house, like for 12 hours a day, it really, and again, it doesn't make me a villain or make me a murderer, but it still is kind of like, there's people out there like this and it makes you just kind of creeped out more about the world. Also, the murders are so funny because they're, they don't use guns. So they use chainsaws. I'm sorry. What did I use? A chainsaw is much better? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let's not get guns in there. Bring in the chainsaw, yeah. lop a head off, the but cha- no guns. The one was like a, um, it was, it was a needle and it was putting, I can't even think of it, some kind of drug into someone. Um, so hi- just hypothetically speaking, so you said you've done 18 of these, correct? 18, 18 movies, eight lifetime movies. Eight lifetime movies. And how many of those are you killing people? Okay. <clears throat> so- Deadly garage sale. I was a killer. Okay. Killed the HOA lady. A oh, shirk. Sure. And who hasn't? Right. Yeah. Look who's stalking. I was the killer. Okay, great. Smuggling in suburbia. <laughs> I wasn't the killer because it was a smuggling movie. It wasn't really like, and we were smuggling blood diamonds, but oh. I was a bad person. Like I was stealing mm-hmm. things and, and smuggling running away. Smuggling blood diamonds in a suburb. Yeah. A uh, classic. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like that story has been told so many times. Oh yeah. 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 And then I was in deep blue nightmare where- the villain was actually a shark. <laughs> First time ever that they did that. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah. There's no human villain. Completely no, just, a, just shark. a shark. So Jaws-esque in nature where everybody's against the shark. Yeah. Okay. I never used to watch horror movies. Do you ever watch horror movies? I, I used to. Oh, I loved them growing up. I liked Hide and Seek with Dakota Fanning. And then what else did I like growing up? I don't know up? if I've seen that. No, I like. I feel like I didn't watch like the main ones. That definitely doesn't sound down the down the beaten path. But no. like I never I would never watch them. I was scared. I was a I was a scaredy baby. I still am. I and think I always wanted to be in them. I think that that's why I watched them. I, even as a kid, I wanted to be that creepy kid. I wanted to be in movies. Like Really? Yeah. And you're there in Houston. And you're like, I was born in the wrong city. Let's yes. go. Yeah. Did you from early on were you just telling your parents like I'm gonna do that? Oh yeah. Age 12. Wait, so where did stand-up come in the mix? Because as I said, for those listening, I knew you so much as a stand-up. And then all of a sudden I like blinked and 15 minutes later, it was like the queen of lifetime. Well, so I originally was acting. I was always acting. I moved to LA to act. Okay. And my dad did stand-up before I was even born. Okay, and this he, is- he works in tech. He just I was doing dad. it. Yeah, <laughs> he was doing it in Austin and they had like a live show they would broadcast- but he was performing. Yeah, in Austin. Before it was cool. Before performing in Austin was cool. Honestly, I may put you in a car in the garage and I may take your parents. I'm just gonna, <laughs> I'm just, just throwing it out there. That's throwing so it out. funny. But he couldn't afford to take my mom on a date at the time. And so he got drink tickets and gave them to her. And so he, that was their date. And so he had this VHS of his stand-up. And he told me the moment I turned 18, I could watch it. Because I guess it was like... Probably raunchy. Yeah, exactly. Mm. And I watch it and I thought it was like so cool. And I would always watch um, like late night television growing yeah, up and yeah. I'd always watch comedy. He doesn't do stand up anymore. He just a, has a regular job, whatever. But then I moved to LA and I was doing acting. And then I met a guy whose friend was performing at um, the improv space at UCLA. It was free. So I would just like watch the show. Sure. And then someone was like, well, why don't you perform? You're always here. And I'm like, well, why would I, why would I perform? And they're like, well, if you're an actor, you could probably, and I was like, whatever. And then I got on stage and I loved it. And then I was doing it so much. Yeah. And I wasn't even on, like, I wasn't even really acting at the, like, I didn't have any Lifetime movies yet or any big movies yet. Or any of the indies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So I was doing that. And then I started booking movies. So I didn't take a break from stand-up, which it's so funny because I feel like people think 
I took a break and it's like, no, I just traveled to film a movie and then I come back. I don't know. I mean, I, I will admit I was kind of one of the people who thought that you were taking yeah. a break. Or but people think I moved back to Texas. I didn't think that, but I, I know there were like people that I used to see all the time, you being one of them, yeah. like Julia Austin, Nick Tarvella, like I, they were all the people that I would but see in the all valley, the time. They actually are my neighbors. Well, I know they're in the Valley now, but they used to be behind they me. Used to be in the West. So, so that must be why I must have seen you in the West side. I don't come to the West side anymore. I know we've all been wondering why. Yeah. I we go, talk about it. I always go to the Valley. Interesting. Yeah. I just lost track of you for a minute and all of a and sudden I'd perform like when I would travel, I'd perform other places too. Even if you were like filming in bumblefuck nowhere, yeah. you'd be like, do you have a comedy club? Here? I tried that. Um, so in Oklahoma, I got to perform. Oh yeah. And then I've never performed there. It was really fun. I forgot the name. Was it Bricktown? I forgot the name. It's something like that. Probably like the Chuckle Hut. It was, know? yeah, <laughs> the Chuckle Hut. Yeah. Um, when I, I filmed the movie in Houston, um, in 2019, I think. And I performed in Houston, of course, cause I'm from there and sure. I know people. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of where else I've worked. So I worked in Tennessee for like a month. I couldn't, I wasn't in Knoxville cause I was in the Smoky Mountains. And I think Knoxville actually didn't have a comedy club. I think the closest one was like Nashville. And I was like, I can't, I didn't have time to go. No. I mean, you could have done like in the Smoky Mountains out for the bears. I mean, if you want, I know, you know just really? perform for the wilderness. I was like, well, well, there was like enough bars. I'm like, can someone just, I'll just perform. Like, yeah. Let me get a mic and a speaker. I'll, yeah, I got please. this. But also that the, the, um, the travel show I did almost allowed me to do comedy in a way of like, I was just like a travel host making jokes along the way. So it was felt like I was doing comedy. Now this is the Smoky Mountains piece. Smoky Mountains Which stories. is different than, not to bring up your past, but is different than, I believe you did some kind of on the road situation with one of the Pauls, if I recall correctly. Jake Paul? Was it Logan? Logan Paul. Yes. Logan Paul. Yeah. Yeah. That's so funny. I played his girlfriend in something. Yeah. But wasn't that also kind of like a road show of some kind? Yeah, but I was just in one episode. Okay. I totally forgot about that. You know what? Here I at Steep, him, we met. Whoa. I think I kissed him. How was it? I might it? be starting rumors. Uh, listen, <laughs> I don't want to say anything, but. Uh, I feel like I kissed him. If, if for everyone listening, so Juliana DeStefano just said she kissed Logan Paul and it was, and I'm quoting here, the worst kiss she's ever no. had. No. Is that not what you said? No. Oh, I'm sorry. That's I still what I don't heard. even know if I kissed him. I don't even, I know I played his girlfriend mm. and there's photos to prove it. So I don't know if I kissed him. I'm going to get canceled. I'm not even big enough to get canceled. So I, I, yeah, I always make that joke where I'm like, no, like. Nobody's coming after I'm me. I'm a clean comic and I literally caught myself saying the other day, I was like. Well, I mean, like people know me as a clean comic. I don't want to like start going right. dirty. And then I was like, wait, right. no one knows me. No one, I can that's, that's do whatever I, I want. You know who knows me? People at TJ Maxx in Nordstrom Rack and the park. Those are the places I get recognized all the time. That is the craziest set of things. Yeah. It's always <laughs> Lifetime though. Is it? And, and, and um, yeah, this happened. Well, think, you know me from Deep Blue Nightmare. Yeah. That's, that one. So funny. That one came out on Lifetime. It plays all the time. It's probably going to play a lot in August because of Shark Week. But it, they sold it to like France or like somewhere else. I get blown up with messages randomly from that movie. Like that's my most popular movie. And get this, I can now say this. I filmed this under the table during COVID. Under a table? Not like... I don't know if the word be illegally, but like... Oh, you mean like, I get it, under the yeah. table, understood, understood, sure. understood. I was like, under a table, <laughs> under, under table, the table. No. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, it was sketchy what I did to film sure. that movie. Um, they announced my, and it was like, nobody's going to see this. Nobody in the world is going to see this movie. Except the entire country Except of France. Entire, and my bucket list was to be in a shark movie. I'm sorry. <laughs> yes. Your bucket list, just to be clear, which could have anything... Had I want to be career bucket list, I guess. Okay, still could have been like I want to star in a movie with Timothy Chalamet, but instead it had I want to be in a shark movie. Shark movie. But did you want to be in a shark horror movie or just any kind of shark movie? I feel like all shark movies are very. Yeah. Like, now that I said that, I yeah. That's like right. my favorite one was Deep Blue Sea. Great movie. And I watched that's the one with it all the Cool time. J, right? Yes. Mm, great movie. So I wanted to be like in a movie like that. And Deep Blue Nightmare was. I was like, I can't turn that down. As you do with these things, are are you do not are you do you have to think about like what is the like what is the career trajectory that I want? Am I contributing to it? Or are you more right now just like I want to just like 
work and experience things, something comes across my plate and it sounds cool, I'm doing it. I'm not worried about what my career arc looks like. A little bit of everything. Oh, Because okay. I... I'm actually at this point where I just want to live life. Yeah. I feel like I've had a lot of fun filming the movies, but there was a time where it was kind of like you had to be here every minute. You had to wait for your phone. I spent months for training to, and I was the top, uh, I was in the top two to be the Power Ranger. I think Power Ranger twice. Maybe the first time was 2018. And I got to the top two, sign stuff. Oh, you had to sign the whole commit, the seven year commit and all that other mm -hmm. stuff. Or it was a one, it was 18 months. Oh, okay. Didn't get it. Then a few years later, they called me again and they sent me straight to like producers. And then I trained more and more with, um, uh, for karate. I got to another audition and they set everybody up with, I guess, a, a trainer, but they weren't paying for it. It was kind of like, you learn it if you want this job kind of thing. And I learned it and I learned it and I had to do all these kicks for them. It was crazy. Do you, okay. So everything happens. You don't get it. Do you, were you still like, I want to keep doing karate? No, no, I couldn't afford it. Oh, got it. Yeah. I was actually the first time I was filming a movie called blood pageant and I was filming that in, sorry, you didn't mention this one before blood pageant. Oh, yeah. It was a Snoop dog. What? <laughs> Why does this conversation continue to get more confusing every minute? Okay, finish your sentence and we're going to come back to blood pageant. So you're doing blood pageant. <laughs> so yeah. I'm, you know, in the heart of these auditions for Power Rangers <laughs> right. while being the lead in a movie. With Snoop. With Snoop Dogg. And it was filming in San Diego for most of the time. Okay. And then it was filming in Ontario, which is about- Ontario, California? Or California, Ontario? Yeah. Okay. So it was 45 minutes away from LA. I get a call that I have like the final callback while I'm filming. Like I'm lead in this movie and I'm, you know, filming the movie that day. So I talked to the first AD and I, and this, this time I was going to be the yellow power Ranger shows. First time was going to be the yellow. Second time was going to be pink. Um, and I talked to the first AD and I was like, this is like a chance of a lifetime. Can we just put the scenes that were at the end? Can we put them in the morning and I'll be back by two. I'll be here at two. My audition was at maybe nine or 10. Like I'd figure it out. And he's like, you're so lucky that Power Rangers was my favorite show growing up. And he Are switched you the whole schedule for me. I like had like this whole yellow kind of outfit on. I, I think I was at a hotel maybe in Ontario because we were like staying for the week. Drove back to LA, did the audition did my little karate kick thing and then came back and then filmed. Yeah. Filmed the classic the blood pageant. Blood pageant. Yeah. I mean, all of our favorite film, I think. Where I totally got possessed in. They did a whole, that's a, that's a whole other thing. What is going on? They did on? a whole seance thing, but they had to have a priest on set because of the, the words that they were saying to call out the devil. It was some creepy shit. Did you, so did you actually get to like work with Snoop Dogg? Yeah. Thoughts? Okay, so the movie is about, it's kind of like the Bachelor slash beauty pageants. So it's like contestants come in, there's a host, we live in this house, and we're competing for this beauty pageant, right? So Snoop Dogg was the um, celebrity uh, judge in the movie. And this so is I the had, craziest. So I okay. filmed, my name was number one on the call sheet. So it's so Juliana Stefano, number one. He was like number 20 because he didn't film that many scenes. My, and this isn't me like dogging anything. It's Snoop just, dogging anything. <laughs> Snoop dogging yeah, anything. Yeah. So I had a trailer and the, I thought my trailer, it was my first time I got a, like a trailer, that, yeah. you know, and it had like a mini fridge and it had a little tiny couch and it had a toilet and a sink. And I thought it was so cool that I had my own movie trailer to like go back and memorize my lines. I was filming every day. He filmed for maybe two days. His trailer had a master bedroom a full kitchen. So more than my apartment. Get yeah, I was going to say, we didn't forget your apartment. Yeah, we did not forget yeah. my apartment. Hot plate and an air fryer. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. exactly. And you opened the trailer and just smoke would come out. It was pretty cool. He was nice. Oh, and then he just, he just decided to like on our breaks, film a music video in the parking lot. Did he offer to smoke you out? No. Oh, I would have been like, I don't even smoke. And I would have been like, am I going to smoke like, the same dog? You know, I think at that time I was so afraid of celebrities. 
no matter if I'm the like main person in the movie, I still like, hi. Are you still afraid of celebrities? Depends. You're aware. I've met so many celebrities. You're a celebrity to some people. But I'm, you- I'm still that girl, though. It's like, oh, I think I know you from something. I can't figure out where I know. Like, that's more than. But you thing. know, people do that to like Jake Gyllenhaal. They go, why do, I, why know do you? I know you? Yeah. Oh, you were in Lord of the Rings. And he goes, that was not me. That like, you just his, know yeah. that like that's happening yeah. to them. I think the only people that are <clears throat> kind of immune to that, I would guess, are like, you got to be like Beyonce. Yeah. Like, you know, you got to be like. Tom Cruise. I think right. like that level for people to be like, no one's mistaking. <laughs> My them. favorite story of getting recognized was so up until now, like now I have a full time job, yeah. nine to five. Yeah. But I was a nanny for years when I wasn't filming. And what I would do is like, I would spend my filming money to pay rent and everything. And then just my living life money, I had to have another job. So I was a nanny. And this happened maybe a year ago. I was at a park with a kid I was babysitting and this grandma comes up to me and she goes, oh my gosh, you're in the Lifetime movies. And I go, I am. And she looks at the kid and she goes, I didn't know you were a mom. And I was like, I'm not, I'm just a nanny. And you're like, it's not not mine, it's not mine. It's it's so embarrassing because then they're like, but aren't you a movie star? And you're like, "Mm, not really. I once, I was, so I lived in Chicago and I was performing at Second City and uh, like six nights a week. And I was on a uh, subway platform and this kid came out to me and he goes, oh my God, I'm like such a big fan. He's like, I love what you do. Can I have your autograph? And I go, and this is where my confidence was. I go, oh, you must be confusing me with someone else. I'm so sorry. I I was like, I'm not Jesse Eisenberg. (laughs) I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I'm a comedian. He goes, no, I know you're at Second City. And I go, and I go, you're probably talking about Tim. So Tim and I look very similar. <laughs> Tim also at Second City. I am, but you're thinking about Tim. That's so funny. Yeah, this kid finally looks at me and goes, dude. It's you. He's like, you sing a song about angel hair pasta. And I go, oh, that's me. <laughs> I do that. I do that. <laughs> oh, and he goes, funny. yeah, dude. I, yeah, I'm a really big fan. And I was like, oh, it became such a humiliating story for me where I was like, my confidence was so low. That's so great. I'm just like, I tried to convince this kid it wasn't me. Right. I'm like, no, dude, it's a someone else. It's someone else. It's definitely not me. That's how I feel like my other like act like actors or my actor friends. Yeah. Are so much more bad confidence and or or more conceited. Well, comedians. I just, I vibe way more with comedians. They're like, no, it, it, it's not me. It, it's good. Uh, yeah. Like, it's just like our, our, e- our confidence is so low. Yeah. I'm like, you've never, you've seen, never me, seen me. Okay. Okay. I had this friend who wasn't my, like, she was a horrible friend. I never liked her. I'm just going to tell you right yeah, now. Yeah. You didn't mm-hmm. like her. You didn't care for her. <laughs> we were at Universal Studios. This is, by the way, nothing against anybody that works at Universal Studios. This was out. Something my friend said. This is a bold preface. Yes. Okay, yeah, yeah. She said that the I think so. I don't know if you've seen. I think it's Waterworld. I don't know the, the where they do the flips and they they. Um, there's a whole show at Universal Studios. And I think they do a Waterworld show. Yeah, and sure. it's mostly actors who are doing it. Sure. This girl looks at me and she goes, "So when your acting career fails, is this where you're going to be working at Universal Studios?" And I was like so upset. I'm walking out, and one of the stunt guys from the show goes, "Hey, don't you do stand up?" <laughs> and recognized me. <laughs> I would have been like, "Oh my god, I do." Fuck. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it was like perfect timing. Oh my god. Yeah. I mean, and by the way, just to be clear, what a joy it would be to do the Water World show I at know. Universal. I wish I could do flips. And have you been to Sea World? No, is SeaWorld still a thing after the whole, like, what was it called? I'm so canceled. I went a few weeks ago. Did you? <laughs> it's better now because they donate money to something. <laughs> okay, great. I love that. It's better now, and I'm quoting, they donate money to something. Okay, excellent, excellent, excellent. Okay. So, yeah, I'm sure the whales are fine. Uh, they talked to the whales now. They no, said no, it's there's good. there's like a whole thing. Like, I think they, whatever. They, what was it called? Black Blackwater? Blackfish. Blackfish. Yeah, Blackfish. great Blackfish. documentary. Couldn't watch it. Okay, it, this is bad. SeaWorld's discounted now, so <laughs> I got a season pass. Oh, it gets worse. I have a season pass now. You have a season pass? How often are you going? Oh, 
I wish I went more. Are you? Oh my God. No, my first time was a few weeks ago and I was like, I've been missing out on this. It's good enough that you were like, I want to go multiple times in okay, a year. So I like Disneyland, but the rides aren't cool. It's just more of the vibe of being at Disney. I think California Adventure has some good rides. I like Six Flags and they have a lot of rides, but then SeaWorld, I guess, felt like there was a theme to it in a way and, mm. and there was cooler actual roller coasters and it was cheaper than Disneyland. So I went, so I didn't spend money at Disneyland. I just got that theme park or amusement park out of me, <laughs> but it got canceled in the meantime. Yeah. I, there's no part of me that like day to day goes, oh, I just Jones in for an amusement park. There's just not a part of me. I don't know what it was. I okay. really wanted to go to Disney I and mean, it's like 200 bucks in the summer. And so my boyfriend and I were like, why don't we just go to freaking SeaWorld? And it was $65. Well, 75 once you got the season pass. Oh yes, exactly. And we got churros. It was fun. There was free beer. It was like free beer Saturday or something. It was fun. By the way, let's be clear about churros. You can in, you know, you can say, hey, I'm going to a funeral, but there will be churros. I'll be like, no, I'll go. Yeah, yeah. I love a churro. I love churros. Yeah, but, but I love a churro with a good dipping. Like, can I get a little chocolate dipping sauce, maybe a little caramel? Oh, another thing I like doing is I'll go to <clears throat> downtown Disney. I'll buy a churro and I'll post a photo on Instagram that I'm at Disneyland. Why is that bad? Because I'm lying. I'm not at Disneyland. Are you good at social media? Are you, are you? No, I don't care about it. Okay. I actually don't have it on my phone. I only have it on my iPad. Oh, so you're not, you, you don't, you're not of the school of thought where you need to have a certain number of followers to, to no. succeed in stand up or in acting. I'm like, I feel like I should put more effort. So I'm starting to put more social clips up okay. on there and, you know, going with whatever the trends are. Yeah. But I only download Instagram on my phone if I, like, I go on a trip or something. Like if I'm out of town for a weekend, somewhere cool and I want to post about it, but I mostly don't have it on my phone. So here's my question. This is confusing. So yeah. you and your you and your boyfriend, you don't watch movies. No. Nope. You don't have social media on your phone. And you don't watch a lot of TV. What do you do? Like what is it? What is like on a so random This is where the story gets great. Oh. Well, we go to SeaWorld. No classic. Yeah. yeah. So, you, yeah um, because you don't believe in the whales. And by yeah. the way, this is not sponsored by Frontier Airlines, but oh, we where paid is this going? $299 for Frontier Airlines for six months to get unlimited $15 tickets. The next weekend we're flying to Dallas to go wine tasting in San Antonio. And I know that sounds weird. We're flying because Dallas is a hub for Frontier and all my friends live there and we're all going wine tasting. So we're flying to Dallas and then all my friends and I were driving to San Antonio. And then when they drive back to Dallas, they just drop me off at the airport. This They're is the craziest shit I've ever heard. We travel a lot. Instead of doing normal human doing things. Normal. We should get to our first segment. Are you ready for the newly friend game? Yes. Love it. So the newly friend game, you grab your board. Okay. Um, it's like the newlywed game, but we're friends. Okay. So the way that this works is I'm going to ask you a question. You're going to not say out, don't say your answer out loud. You're going to write it down. I'm going to ask you a question, write down your answer. I'll write down what I think your answer is. Then okay. we'll flip our boards over and see if we got it right. And then we'll do the same question for me. Now, you, as I've learned today, have played a lot of different villains. So given that, if you could pick a famous movie villain that has already happened and you could reprise that role. We're going to do a reboot of this movie and you get to play the villain. Don't say the answer out loud. Write it down. Who is the villain that you would want to play? One, two, three. Fli <gasps> no! Oh my God. Oh my God. We got it right. Oh my God. We both wrote Corella DeVille. That is the craziest thing that has ever happened on this podcast. Oh my this gosh. This is the greatest moment of my life. Nothing is going to be better than this. We might as well quit the whole podcast. Wow. Wait a minute. Okay. I, for some reason, in my heart of hearts, remember when I said I just feel it? Yeah. I totally was like, she'd be a great Cruella DeVille. Like, that would be a killer role for you. She is a complex character. She's interesting. She's fun. And I was like, you'd crush this. Why did you pick it, her? Because it's a, a movie I've watched. I haven't watched a lot of movies. But you know a lot of villains. Yeah, but, like, not fast enough. Like, I couldn't think fast enough to think of one that, that's, like, topical right now. And I was like... Oh, a Disney one would be coming back or like, yeah, I, mean, I feel like they just did it, but still they did just do Cruella, which by the way, was a wonderful film. Yeah. 
Um, that is crazy. I, I love that we both chose that, but it sounds like you, you did not put as much thought into it as I did. You're like, no, I'm just going to pick this I was this like, character. which one's the one with the dogs? <laughs> <laughs> Can I just make it really weird? Jess has a weird obsession every time we see Dalmatians out in public. She like, she thinks it's like spotting like, you know, like a diamond in the rough. She goes, oh, a Dalmatian. I think it's so rare. Okay. So you also are I like that. I do that too. Really? I don't see them a lot. We, I mean, I don't see them a lot either. I heard but they're like, weird dogs. Are they? Yeah. I heard they're like wild. Yeah, well, they gather in packs of 101. <laughs> that's, a, that's just what I've heard. That's I don't funny. know if it's true. Um, that's so okay, funny. Okay, so we're going to do the same question for me. Okay. You're going to have a really tough time because you don't watch any movies. So I'm going to try and choose more down the line. Like, I'm not going to choose someone that you haven't heard of. Okay, so okay. we'll say that. It's One, wrong. One, two, three, four. Flip Batman. Batman is a superhero. I know. Not a villain. So I so, couldn't think fast enough. So I wrote the lead girl in Blood Pageant. <laughs> I, that was my first one. I feel like I would crush in that. The second one I wrote was Billy Zabka and the Karate Kid. He's See, the guy that sweeps the that. leg. Yeah, I didn't think you would. And then I also wrote the Icelandic coach in Mighty Ducks. Yep. No. Never seen those. I was trying to think of The Incredibles. I've seen that movie. Uh, Who's the villain in that? Oh my God. I was about to say Frozen, but that's not the villain. Um, oh my God. What's his name? I don't... See, I don't know. I only know the heroes. Oh, okay, big dog. Sorry that you know all the superheroes. You're sure. like, listen, I hobnob with the superheroes. I hobnob. I almost was um, one. I was almost the Power Rangers. So. Listen, I don't want to brag, but I was almost pink and yellow. Pink and yellow. Um, no, that's that's the game. You can put your board down. I told you it was quick. It runs it by so quick. Fast. Here's the thing. I do think I could be a really great lead girl in Blood Pageant. Are they going to make Blood Pageant two? Sign me up. Um, one thing that we talked about off mic, by the way, that I do want to I want to bring up because I think it's so awesome. Um, when you first came here, can you tell the story a little bit that you were telling off Mike when you first came here that you had dropped out of school yes. and then the changes that you made? Yes. So when I first moved to LA, I, I, the agreement was you can move to LA if you go to college, of course. And I feel like that's a probably a fair, a yeah. fair compromise. Yeah. And it was, I, I moved here and then hung out at the improv space and I was actually <laughs> hanging out with people that didn't go to UCLA. Oh, they actually all dropped out of college and they were like, you should too. Otherwise you're never going to make it. Well, one of them ended up being on a TV show and I never made it. And I was like, well, why did I do that? And then years later, I just, something came to me and I was like, I kind of, I felt like I was at like a stopping point, not an acting, but I was like, if all else fails, what am I going to do? And I, um, went back to school, but it was the best thing I did because I balanced a lot because I was still filming movies and I filmed Smoky Mountain Stories. But what was cool about the university that I went to, it was a lot of people going back to school. Really? Yes. I, I ended up booking a movie one of the semesters and I like told my um, teacher and he, he allowed me to come to a different class for three weeks when I was filming. Uh, the other teacher just... I. I think I only, when I was in Tennessee, one of the classes ended up being online and then I only missed like one, like the in-person one. So I like really did it well. I it got totally lucky. And then I took a podcasting class last summer before I graduated and I just took it cause it was a summer one. And I had to have a guest as a, on my podcast that I had to make. And it was a comedian that I know. And she worked for a podcast company and she was like, you know that this is my job, right? And I go, really? And she got me an internship at her company, which was the hardest thing to do at 28. Like I wasn't getting paid. I was getting school credit and I was still acting, still doing stand up, still babysitting, still in school. And I was learning how to produce podcasts and learning how to edit. So I did that first semester and then... I, I think it was like in December when I turned in all my finals, I said, you know, the internship's over, of course, cause I'm done. And she's like, can you just go on one more meeting? And I was like, sure. And I like get on the zoom and everybody's in Dallas and they like offered me the job to be like full time. She knew that was going to happen. Yeah. Cause she was in Dallas for, for, um, they did like a little workshop thing. The company's in Dallas. So I work remote. Um, in LA. I can't imagine what would happen if you were like, no, I, mean, I don't want to no, do another meeting. I'm fine. I'm fine. Thank you. I think I'm so much happier now because I'm able to like still do everything I want, but also have stability and, and getting a degree has just changed my mindset because I'm like, I'm good. I know people have different beliefs of like school doesn't matter or this or that, but 
to me, it did because I'm like, no matter what, I'll find something to survive. Cause I, I don't think I was finding anything before that because I was filming and I was still like baroque, you know, it was hard. Yeah. We had, um, do you know, Ellery Smith? Probably. She's another stand up in LA and we had her on and she was telling it, like telling us she, she wrote on robot chicken. She had three Emmy nominations for writing on robot chicken. Oh, and she was she, on the show. Was she on the show? Yes. 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 yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And she was a nanny. Yeah. And she's yeah. like, it's very humbling. And I, and I think that like, there is a common misconception that I think people outside of the industry have where they see someone who has some success and they go, oh, they must be getting paid millions. It's like, no. Like, that's not how it works. Because what people don't understand is that we're actually desperate. So yeah. a lot of the time we're and taking- they take advantage. We, they take advantage. And a lot of the time we're doing things for low pay because we want to be in a movie or we want to be on a stand-up show or we want to do this or we want to do that because we love it. And I will continue to do that. But again, it's also good to- have something else. And my job is creative. Like I get yeah. to work with reality stars. I work with uh, a former Miss USA. Like I'm working with people and I'm getting to like write questions for them and I get to edit their podcast. I get to make it funny in a way. So it's so much fun. When you, when you had first dropped out of school and then you th were thinking about going back, was the drive to go back more about you wanted to finish what you started and open other doors or was it more driven by like feeling regret for having dropped I out? I was like not taken seriously. So many different, it was like weird. I mean, it's I come from Texas where it's like most people are educated mm. with like masters. Like they're, they're just, everybody graduates and has a good job. Like it was weird that, and and I think even dating felt weird. I felt less than the people I was dating in a way. It was oh, wow. like a really big, weird insecurity that I had. Yeah. Um, and then I was like, I just got to push through it and like see what happens. And I ended up getting to go to school for free. What? Yeah. Because I was, I think it, I was over the age of 24 and I wasn't dependent on anybody. And because of like my financial status, it was like, and I went to a school where they got a lot of government funding. And so I went, I think I paid for a bachelor's degree, uh, $1,200. Okay. So everyone who's listening to this is going to be so upset. I um, know. I know. Was that, I mean, I don't want to make you rank the decisions you've made in your life, but like, was that kind of one of the best decisions? It was the, uh, the best. It's changed my attitude. Yeah. It's changed like my mindset on life, everything. And it's cheesy because it's like, I don't think so. I get told by so many people who didn't go to school, like, what's the point? And I'm like, well, cause again, it is kind of like the finishing. It's also like, once you're done with a movie role, it's mm. done. And you go from high, high to low, low, and then people forget it. I think finishing the degree was something where I'm like, nobody's ever going to take that from me. It's always there. Yeah. It's like, it's going to help me more than it's going to harm me. So did it harm you at all? No. No, I was worried though. I was like, oh, am I not going to be able to act? You know, am I going to, mm. cause I was going to school full time. That strikes me as absolutely insane. But and like, I was top I, of my class too. Yeah. Are you bad at I anything? I had like 3.8 GPA. I think. Yeah, we, yeah. We're going to do another show about what, what, what are you bad at? It's oh going to be gosh, something. So many things. I mean, obviously don't think about them right now. Let's relish in yeah, what you just did. Yeah, that's why I paused because it's not like, oh, what? What am I bad at? I thought like, so many things that I'm like, I can't even. Oh, I said that to someone the other day. Someone was like, oh my God, are you good at everything? I was like, no. I'm bad at so many. I was like, literally, let's start with sports. You know Jesus. what I'm really good at? Rock climbing. Pogo sticking. <laughs> Sorry, what? How did you find out you're good at pogo sticking? Is it called pogoing? Do people say pogoing? Or is it pogo? I, it's always pogo I sticking. I don't know. It's or on like, my resume though. It's not gotten me anywhere though. You know what? Actually, it did get me somewhere. I did this game show. Oh my gosh. I did this game show. Um, it was like a comedy game show years ago that never got made or released or whatever. And I pogo sticked in it. They did like an intro video of like who you are. And I pogo sticked. Yeah. When did you discover? When I was nine. You were just like, give me a pogo stick. And I'm because I'm that. tiny. I looked it up. I'm still like, I, I'm still under the weight of pogo sticking because they don't really make... I don't think they make a lot of adult pogo sticks. So if you're under a certain weight, you can still buy a kid one and be fine. You can still stick it. You could still stick it. Yeah. So I, I think I did it recently in like 2019 or something and it was still really good. It's such a workout. Watch. I mean, I bet 
I could see it being like a thing. I'm going to start that. You're going to start the pogo stick workout? Yeah. It's so good. It's good for your legs. I used to do my homework on, or I'd like study like questions when I was a kid on it. Like if I had like spelling or whatever, like I just pogo stick. You are an enigma. Every time I think I've figured you out, you say a thing where I'm like, you what? Yeah. <laughs> You're like, yeah, I used to study on the stick. I'm like, yeah. what in God's name? Were your parents just like, quiet down with the pogo stick? The neighbors were because the cap was broken. There's a cap on the bottom, so it doesn't make a, like a, a, a loud noise on the concrete. Yeah. But then the cap was broken, and so it just like, it was just making a really bad noise. So it was really loud. And the neighbors were like... If you don't tell that girl of yours, yeah, yeah, just shut it. Um, That is absolutely insane. My last question, because I I know we have to get to the lightning round, but I'm just dying to know, are there any weird uh, talents that are also living in your resume that whether they're true or not, are there any other weird ones hiding on there? No, but you know what's happened to me a lot lately that's made me really sad? I keep getting auditions lately and I'm like so excited. And then I look at the the bio of the audition, like the character breakdown, and it'll be like, please, average women only, no model types. And it'll just be like so like degrading. Yeah, you're like, oh, I'm like, here I, I am. I mean, exactly. The average like, woman. That means my agent was like, oh, average looking woman, Juliana, ding. I had to fire my agent because he got me an audition where I played a, and this is from the the breakdown. This is not me saying this, um, a ghetto talking, uh, uh, a valet is what it said. And I was like, no, I literally said, I, I wrote it back, said, I'm not doing this. And he said, it's a great opportunity. I said, I'm not, I'm not doing this. Like I it's, it's no one talks this way and it's, it's offensive and yeah. it's rude. I know. And he's like, well, I think it's a great opportunity. I was like, well, I think you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Wow. Yeah. And then it turns out I he had gotten me an audition after, but I had already fired him as the celebrity judge for blood pageant. And then I just couldn't do it. So they got Snoop Dogg, everybody. Snoop. At the time, he was Snoop Lion. But, Snoop you know, they Lion. ended up getting Snoop Dogg. That's funny. It's a problem. Um, are you ready for the lightning round? I'm ready. So the lightning round, it's five fast questions. They do not at all have to be fast answers. They're just the last five questions we end every episode with. I keep them on an index card, not because I don't have them memorized, because this is the closest I'll be to a talk show host. Um, I, sometimes I think I'm on like singled out. You know what I mean? Did you ever watch that show? No. Oh, it was like this old MTV show. I love MTV though. And they always had index cards and it felt good. Uh, do you still love MTV? No, because there's nothing on it now. I was going to say, what do they have? But it's I like liked, ridiculousness. Like, Next and Room Raiders. And- do you want to know what I wanted to do? What? what? In my in my like teens and early 20s. I wanted to be a writer for Next who just wrote the thing that rhymed where the person would be like- um, When like, they walk off the bus? Yes. Yeah. Like, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of a good one. Like, uh, Juliana's come down. Is she the new girl in town? We'll see if we see her around <laughs> on next. Like, I was like, I can write those like, rhymes. I, write I give you the, I want to be the rhyme writer. I, I, by the way, anyone under the age of like 25 is going to be like, what are these what two talking show about? Is that? Yeah. yeah. I also loved Diary on MTV. Diary? Diary. It was like celebrities would do like a, do- like a mini documentary where like cameras would follow it's them so around smart. for like a week. And I just remember they did one on Chris Rock and he was just like, sometimes I just like to steal. <laughs> and I was like, that's funny. Phenomenal. Okay. Question one, what is a favorite ritual of yours? So for example, I love brewing tea in the morning. Lately I've liked running and I don't know if it's a ritual. It, 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 it can be if you want it to be. But it's now been the thing um, when I go to a new city. Like I like, I don't like, now I don't even know if this is a ritual because my boring one was like, I drink coffee every day. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> and I love the, the voice we did there. I drink coffee. Yeah, and that's what every I do. day. It's great. Uh, no, I think running every time you go to a new city is a ritual. Well, yeah. Or like trying not to get in a car. Like, it's, it's so weird. You're talking about when you go to a new city, not generally. Yeah. New city. I thought you meant generally like you try not to get no, in a car. No, like tomorrow in San Francisco, I'm going to try not to get in a car. Like I'm going to take a train from the airport. Sure. And just explore the whole city by either foot, bike, ferry, or cable car. Like it's like a weird, cheap way to explore a city. And you feel like you're on a tour. I love it. I don't know if that's a ritual, but. Well, I'm going to count it. (laughs) What is a, uh, question two, what is a running bit you have with a friend or partner that makes you laugh? I keep accidentally punching my boyfriend. (laughs) 
<laughs> and so I say, like not in the face. No, like I'll be sleeping. Yes, no, kind of like I'll elbow him or something, and I'll be like, I'm sorry, I'm going to a growth spurt. <laughs> I and love so, that. The, the like, girl who could still uh, legally be on the pogo stick for kids. Yes. Yeah, you're I'm like, like I'm sorry, expert. I'm still growing. So I, that always it makes him laugh if I accidentally like hit him Bop or bop him in the face. Kick him. Like I'll just randomly, he's like, what is. That's a phenomenal I answer. Also have really pointy elbows. Your elbows look fine. Really? I think so. No, they're pointy. Show me your elbow. Okay, hold on. For the audience, you're going to have to watch this on YouTube to see. I, I, think, I think we have the same pointiness. Do we maybe not? Maybe you just have a pointy elbow. Do you, do you have a pointy elbow? Wow. Yeah. Okay. Jude is saying, for those who, who can't hear him, Jude is saying we both have pointy elbows. Pointy elbows. Now I'm going to hide mine. Hold on. <clears throat> yeah, you should. Now should I'm be. self-conscious. I can I tell you something? Never is that part of my body made me self-conscious until today. Oh, eighth grade. Everybody's like, you got knife elbows. I'm like, what? <laughs> How is it the kids are able to just narrow in on your biggest insecurity like that? Like, oh, look at old knife elbows knife over there. Elbows. Oh my God. And then it was, of course, like, he just likes you. <laughs> Well, if he liked me, maybe you'd say I have nice elbows. Nice elbows. Ugh. What was his name? I don't even remember. Well, I don't care for him. Exactly. Uh, question three. Okay. What is a very controversial opinion that you have? Really? Yeah. I don't like homeless people. <laughs> <laughs> they just chase me. Oh, I always okay. get chased in, in like North Hollywood. So over aggressive. We maybe say aggressive, aggressive homeless people get to Controversial, you. Controversial, yeah. Yeah. I mean, listen. And most of the people I run into, of all the people I run into in LA, homeless or not, I, I think it's rare that someone is just like, it's so good to meet. Like, how are you? Can yeah. I give you something for free? Like, that doesn't happen. The other day, excuse me, I went to order a cup of coffee and I was like, oh, I'm sorry. Um, Are there two shots or one shot if I just get a macchiato? And they're like, everything's two. People are so rude these days. I was just like, uh, okay, I didn't know. I was like, and I literally, me, I apologized to him. Yes. I yes. was like, oh, I'm really sorry. I didn't mean to upset that you. Happened I didn't to me know. at a bagel shop. They got my order wrong and they were like, well, maybe if you're more specific. What? what? Okay. Just as a Jew, I need to know. What did they do wrong with your bagel? They like, it's supposed to be like a lock courage sandwich. Was it courage? No. Like the place? Yeah. No, it's a place in Burbank. I forgot. I forgot the name. I mean, the um, big bagel places, I think of for like courage, yeasty Hanks, boys. Hanks. Don't know it. Yeah. So you can talk all the trash you talk want. I don't know. Thanks. Um, and so it was like $19 for a bagel with a piece of salmon on top. And my boyfriend and I were like, oh, we ordered like the lox sandwich. And they're like, well, maybe say that next time. We're like, we did. And then like the manager had to come to us. Also don't like people with green hair. Sorry, I'll just put Green that. hair? Yeah. How many people are you running into with that? Managers in the Valley of, they're like 21 and they have nose piercings and green hair. And they're like, they'll defend the person. Like the, like the, the cash, the cashier got so mad at my boyfriend and I, and we weren't even mad. And then the girl with the green hair, who's 21 managing the place was like, well, we understand, but it was like just defending the cashier. Not like, just, like, just get me what I ordered yeah. and like, let's move on. And then on. she charged us again for another bagel. We were like, what? Are you serious? Yes. I would never go back there. Yeah. So we're like, no. I'm telling you right now, like, I'm sorry to say this, but like, Hanks, you're out. You're done. I just am looked I right get, on the- Am I going to get sued? From Hanks? Yeah. I don't think so. You told the true story. That's true. Okay. Unless she had like blue hair and then now we're- oh. uh, uh, you know, this could be a problem. Question four. Have you ever experienced imposter syndrome? And if so, is there one moment that really sticks with you? I got an audition for something. I'm not going to like say what it was. You don't have to. Um, it was the Avengers. Got it. Okay. <laughs> and it was really freaking big and not a lot of people got called to audition, I think. Oh, wow. And I kept telling people, oh, I think it's a mistake. I think... It must be, is it open call? Like, is everybody auditioning? Do you know anybody? And everybody's like, no, I think I know one other person out of like everybody we know in LA. And I was like, oh, weird. And then I, I, I mean, I did the audition and it was great, but it was kind of like made me, I, I was just couldn't convince myself that I actually got chosen. Wow. Yeah. And then, um, I'll do great shows and people will laugh and I, I, I will be like, oh, it must've just been an easy crowd. Like. Why would they laugh? Like I, I kind of. I think we all do that, I and do I that. hate. I hate that I do it. Yeah, and I'm not. I'm not proud of that part of me. Or I'll do something good at work, and people will notice, and they'll be. I'll be like, oh, they just, they just are babying me. Like they don't actually think I did something. Like I, I I'll just go. I always do that. Yeah. I 
going back to the first thing you said um, uh, about the audition, like to me, one of the best things I ever heard, um, and I'm trying to remember who it was from, was um, when you are an actor, auditioning is your job. A side benefit is occasionally getting roles, but your job is to audition. Yeah. And it completely changed my mindset about auditioning. And um, I remember I, I heard um, an interview with Allison Williams from Girls. I don't know if you knew her. Um, I know you don't watch anything, but um, sure. she was all, she was also in Megan, if you saw that, or Get Out, if you saw that. You didn't see either of those. Excellent. I think Get Out was a long time ago. I respect that. Um, suffice it to say, she once said that like she celebrates the little victories. If she gets a big audition, regardless of what happens outside of it, the fact that she got the audition, yeah, like she will celebrate. And I <laughs> hope- that you were able to celebrate getting that audition. I did. I definitely was happy because I'm like the in, I'm not going to book what it was. I already know I'm not going to book what it was, but getting that audition shows I did something right in the comedy world. Not only that, you also have a casting director who has influence yeah. seeing you. Yeah. I'm proud of you and I'm not even, you, you know, what do I know? I know nothing. <laughs> um, all right. Question five, final question. What is your favorite tea? And if you don't love tea, what is your favorite comfort? I don't like tea, actually. That's really? What I haven't drank. I mean, I like this tea, actually. Okay. It's different. This was okay. Like. Okay. Sweet tea in Texas. So that doesn't count. It, I, but yeah. But it's not my comfort because I, I feel like that's, I like coffee. I'm a big coffee drinker but oh. i only like cheap coffee i went to alfred's the other day this is weird if you do you know alfred's i'm very familiar so alfred's is i a, don't i don't go there because yeah. it's a little expensive but exactly. i know exactly i got i had a gift card oh, from good it. For yeah. you. and i went and i was like ordering coffee and it was so confusing and i was like can you just make it like mcdonald's and they just <laughs> stared at me you're just like can i just get a black coffee cream and sugar yeah yeah and they're like, no. Well, because they were like, it's drip and it's Americana and it's this. And I was like, I just want coffee with ice. Yeah, just like ice. I want regular They won't coffee. just do an iced coffee? No, they're just like, oh, but it's, but the, this, and it was too strong. But I, I made it, I did something and it was good. But yeah, I like cheap coffee. I, like 7-Eleven coffee. The guy that cuts my hair, shout out Raphael, greatest guy in the whole wide world, starts every morning for 20 plus years with a McDonald's coffee. Love it. And I'll tell you this, if it's good enough for Raphael, it's good enough for all of us. You know what I mean? He's a legend so and he's good. drinking it. And it's yeah. cheap. It's like a $1.20 or something. You know, you know what's an embarrassing thing for me? What? When I have those really sugary Dunkin' Donuts coffees, I like those too. Oh yeah, those are good too. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not one of those people who goes. Ew, it's so sugary. I'm like, ew, it's so delicious. It's, yeah, it's dessert in a cup. I I, I like coffee, but well, again, I won't pay a lot of money for it. The well, more money shouldn't. I pay, the worse. It, I don't like the taste of it. <laughs> um, we have an espresso. If I made that, would you drink it? No. Okay, because too strong. too strong. All right. Um, and I make faces when I don't like stuff, so I don't really like alcohol either. I like wine, but anything else, I'm like, Ugh. you'll make a face. Yeah. So you're very easily red. So if you like, like someone can read you very easily. Yes. Mm. Yes. So like if your boyfriend cooked for you and you don't like it, you'd be like, that's yeah, good. Yeah, but he cook, he's such a good cook. So that doesn't happen. But I he'll, wouldn't know. He hasn't made me a damn thing. I know. <laughs> but if he gives me like, I'll try some of his whiskey or something. I'm like, I just oh, don't it's like a whole it. thing. Yeah. I don't like it. <laughs> um, well, that's the podcast. How do you feel? Great. Yeah. I, I think that the big the big learning I have here is that we all need to watch, is it Deadly Garage Sale? Deadly Garage Sale. Deadly Garage Sale. Or more importantly, The Curse of the Clown Motel. Go find it wherever you see streaming things. Yes. Um, thank illegally. You. Yeah, illegally only. Um, come back anytime. Yes, I would love to. Thank you. Of course. That was Juliana Stefano. You can find her on Instagram at Juliana Stefano one This episode was produced by Jude Crowner. It was edited by Martin Alvarez. Our theme song and additional music are by Oliver Hymack. Our cover art was done by Neil Fraser with photography by Matt Mazisco. Social media by Dia Villegas. Please write a review and rate our podcast on Apple Podcasts and wherever else you can. You can send any questions, comments, newly friend game suggestions, or tea suggestions to steepcombos at gmail.com or tweet us at steepcombos. I'm Josh Lanzette, and you can follow me on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook at Josh Lanzette. We'll be back next week. So until then, happy steeping. I wonder if like the real in insiders call it just, oh, I was sticking. I was sticking. I was sticking. I like that. Yeah, Sounds you know? dirty. Yeah, I was PSing, you know? <laughs>